We are here with our live in-studio jury, also joining us our online jury at home. Our ladies and gentlemen of the jury tonight are deciding the ultimate issue, the issue we've all been waiting for. Now, in every case, there are closing arguments. And today, each side is going to deliver their closing arguments to you in full. Let's start with the prosecution. Vinny Politan. Thank you so much, Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is a case about fact versus fiction. This is a case about what she did versus what she said. What she did, those are the facts. What she said, that's a whole lot of fiction. Let's start with the why of it. Why would she kill Travis Alexander? Why would she murder him? She was obsessed with him, absolutely obsessed from the moment they met. But let's go fast forward to when they break up. She's living in California. He's living in Mesa, Arizona. They break up. She moves to Mesa, Arizona. It's that obvious. It's that simple. Travis is trying to date other women. What does she do? She's peeking in the house, looking. She's walking in on him. Who does that? Someone who is obsessed. Who's checking whose emails and who has all the passwords of Travis Alexander? It's Jody Arias. She's obsessed. So what put her over the edge? from obsession to murder. Cancun. She wanted to go to Cancun with Travis Alexander, and she knew he was going with someone else. But she knew who that person was, and that's the key. It was Mimi Hall. And you saw the interrogation video. Jody Arias thought that Travis Alexander was eventually going to marry Mimi Hall. She was the one, and she was going to Cancun with Travis. It's classic fatal attraction. If I can't have you, no one else can. Now, let's talk about her plan, what she did. And it's all fueled by this obsession for Travis Alexander. And I want to begin, because what you have to understand is the, the big part of her plan was, what am I going to tell investigators after the murder? Well, take a listen to what she actually did. Jody Arias, story number one. Were you at Travis's house on Wednesday? Absolutely not. I was, n I was nowhere near Mesa. I was nowhere near no. Phoenix. <sighs> I wasn't even close to him. All of her plan, the premeditation, all predicated upon her story, her plan, that she was going to tell everyone all along that she wasn't there. Let's get to what she did, the facts of this case, ladies and gentlemen. She got a gun. She was living in a home with her grandparents. A 25 caliber goes, goes missing one week before a 25 caliber is used to shoot Travis Alexander. She got the gun. She brought the gun. She rented a car. She owned a car, but to take this road trip, she rented a car. She was offered a red one, but she took a white one because it was less noticeable. 90 miles from her home, she rents a car, so no one will notice her there at the car rental agency. But the owner remembered her. And what did he remember her as? A blonde. Remembered her as a blonde. That's on June 2nd when she rents the car. June 3rd, she's a brunette. A full brunette by June 3rd. You all can take a look at this. So why does she change the color of her hair? Because she doesn't want anyone to see the blonde ex-girlfriend of Travis Alexander in Arizona, the stalking blonde. She's a brunette. People aren't going to recognize her. Because she went off the grid in Arizona. The plan was, I was never there. So what does she do? No credit card transactions. No credit card transactions. She fills up three gas cans in California so she can fuel up in Arizona without going to a gas station. No record of a transaction, no videotape, thank you, no videotape of her in Arizona at a gas station. It's all part of going off the grid. And then finally, she turned off her cell phone. You saw her on the stand for 18 days. She loves to talk. But she turned off the cell phone when in Arizona. So there's no record of her. She's off the grid. It's part of the plan. OK, now, remember, this is her plan, right? It's not the greatest plan in the world. It's not a master plan. It's her plan fueled by her obsession. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why this happens. That's why she has sex with Travis Alexander. She's still obsessed with him. She wants to be the last person on Earth to have sex with Travis Alexander. You can pass that along as well. She gets him in a vulnerable position after they do all that. He's in the shower. He's naked. 
He's vulnerable. That's when she attacks him with the knife. And you know what she did to him. 29 stab wounds, slits his throat. Why didn't she use the gun that she brought? Well, there's a reason why she didn't. Because she wanted him to know. Remember, this is her obsession. She wants him to know who's killing him. She wants him to know why she is killing him. And ultimately, she really wants him to know that she's going to be the last woman he's ever with. Now, she made mistakes. She got caught. But don't confuse good police work with reasonable doubt. Because I want to talk about reasonable doubt. If we can put reasonable doubt up here. Beyond a reasonable doubt. The key word, ladies and gentlemen, is reasonable. You just need a firm belief. That's what it means, a firm belief. A real possibility equals reasonable doubt. But it's got to be reasonable, okay? Let's talk about premeditated first-degree murder. That's what I have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt, okay? I don't have to prove every fact in this case beyond a reasonable doubt, just the three elements of premeditated first-degree murder. What are they? Cause the death of another person. Got that one. Intended or knew that she would cause the death of another person. You saw the stab wounds, the slit throat, okay? You saw the injuries, the gunshot to the head. Acted with premeditation. Ooh, don't be scared of premeditation. Doesn't take a week. Doesn't have to take a day. Doesn't have to take an hour. Doesn't have to take a minute. It's just time to reflect on your plan. So if she got the knife out of her suitcase, that's enough time. If she just went in the other room to get the knife, that's enough time because she has reflected upon her plan. But in this case, we have much, much more. I mean, she's doing it a week ahead of time. But she doesn't have to for premeditation. It's just reflecting on your plan to kill. Now, reasonable doubt, where is it? Where is it from their perspective? It's got to be a real possibility. Is it coming out of her mouth? Is anything she says reasonable, any of her stories, the crazy chase scene, the killing that, that results in this in 62 seconds, in 62 seconds she does all this? Is that a real possibility? Is that reasonable doubt? No. Ladies and gentlemen, use your common sense in figuring out what's reasonable and what's not reasonable. But before I go, I want you to take a listen to Jody Arias one more time. No jury is going to convict me. Why not? Because I'm innocent, and you can mark my words on that one. No jury will convict me. Ladies and gentlemen, that statement belongs in the fiction column, but I can't do it. You are the only ones that can do it by following the evidence and coming back with a verdict of guilty of first-degree murder. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, powerful argument from the prosecution. Next, you'll hear from the defense.